There you are, Eddie. How are you? How you doing? All better. All better. Wow. Well, it's good to talk to you, my friend. What happened there? Could you tell us what, what, what exactly was the injury? I got a fist fight. Yeah. Okay. So I had a, um, I had a torn choroidal, which is part, uh, part of the retina, uh, tour at, or detached. And then I, um, I split my eyelids. So, uh, my top eyelid and my bottom eyelid split in, split in half during, uh, from a punch. Man. Uh, and how long did it take for it to recover? Uh, well, it wasn't it wasn't super long. Maybe like two. I think they told me two weeks for the detached choroidal. Um, it's not it's non surgical. I don't have to get anything no surgery done. And um, the eyelid itself, they stitched it really well in Japan, which I was lucky. Um, they did a really good job. And that was healed up probably in like three weeks' time, something like that. So did you feel that right away? Because it did seem when he landed that punch that it really affected you and that was kind of the beginning of the end. Did, did, did you feel that right away? And if so, what did it feel like? Like the worst injury that I've had in my I've been fighting maybe 16 years now. So um, never had anything feel like that. I, ne I never during a fight stopped giving a shit about the, the outcome, the opponent. I, I immediately didn't care about anything other than getting to a hospital as fast as possible. I felt like my, my eyeball kind of like it exploded. Wow. And, um, and then I can feel the air getting into my eye, like directly into my eye. So it was more of a, I don't know. It was more, it was, th it was career threatening. That's a, That's what I felt like. Um, the immediate, the immediate feeling. Wow. You thought your eye was going to fall out? Not fall out, but I was getting a gush of blood, like a lot of warm blood straight from my eyeball. And I thought that I affected my eye and my eyeball. And I thought, you know, there was a possibility of maybe sight, an issue with sight. So I wanted to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Um, even when we got to the hospital, they were doing, they were messing with it with stitches, doing stitching my eyelid. And then out of nowhere, I had a gush of blood coming out of my eye oh, my. from almost like, I guess, like a blood blister, like the kind you get on your finger. When you pop them, you get like a burst. It was, I had that, but I had it in the white part of my eye. So one of them popped when I was in the hospital. It was it was nasty, man. Nasty night. Wow. Um, okay, so in the end, though, no surgery needed, correct? No surgery. It was a detached choroidal. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But um, they told me no surgery and that should be healed up within two weeks or so. And then just the laceration of the eyelid, just wait till that heals up. There was obviously a lot of attention on this fight because it was your debut. You left the UFC, you signed this big deal. Leading up to the fight in Japan, being back there, you know, when you start with a new organization, you're, you're, you're not new to this, but there is always that you know, that, that feeling out process. What did it feel like just being in a new organization for the first time in a while? Um, I, I didn't like the, the immediate attention I was getting. I, I felt like it was undeserved. I didn't, I didn't get any wins under that banner. Um, so I don't know. I, I like going into promotions, kind of playing the underdog and, um, earning my, earning my respect. So I feel like I, maybe that's why I, I don't know. I subconsciously lose my debuts in promotions just so I can um, have to fight for something. So I don't know, man. But um, I love fighting in Japan. I love going over there. The sleep thing was a little difficult going over there and adjusting for a 13-hour sleep pattern, 13-hour uh, difference. That was a little difficult. Um, but other than that, I felt amazing. I That's why I took a fight immediately – like I took a fight in August because regardless of the outcome of the last fight, I gotten so much better over that four months of training for my debut that I just didn't feel like I got to show it. So um, I took a fight in August 2nd just because I, I felt like I gained so much momentum and I got so much better as a fighter that I want to display that. But you can understand why there was a lot of attention on you. It was a big deal that you were signing over there. No, a hundred percent. I just don't like, uh, I don't know. I felt like I was getting a lot of, res not, I'm not saying attention. I'm fine with attention, just respect. Like, 
um, I don't know. I feel like respect is kind of earned. It, it, it's undeserved until you go somewhere and actually start beating guys and become the champion. Um, I felt like there was a lot of already honor and respect there. So did, I don't know. Did, did, do you feel more pressure to justify the big contract? No. No, I don't. I think I seen something online uh, a little while ago. It's like, you're not, you're not paying me for a fight. You're paying me for 16 years, you know, of, of doing what I've done. So I don't, I never look at it like a here and now thing. Like I don't, I don't get paid for my fights for what I do for 15 minutes inside the cage. I get paid uh, for being a lifelong martial artist for doing this for, you know, the 20 years of my life. That's why I'm paid. And in this particular f fight, you fought at 170, right? Because of their 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 weight cut rules. How did you feel about that? Yeah, we, I love the fact that um, that it was a hydrated weigh-in that I didn't have to I didn't have to cut weight. But um, I'm still trying to figure that whole thing out. I don't I don't. There's no way I can make 155 hydrated. I can't do that. Um, there's no way I can do that. And and play by the rules that that i'm given but I, I felt like at 170 i did feel like the guy was a lot bigger than i was so i needed to figure that out yeah i mean how is that even possible how, how, like there's just no way right and how do they even tell how could they know if you're high what do they do to find out if you're hydrated or dehydrated at 170 as opposed to one one 155 how do they determine this so you have to pee before you even weigh in. So if you don't pass the hydration, you won't even you won't even uh, get a chance to uh, weigh in and pass that. So you have to pass the hydration first and foremost. You have to pee in a cup, and you pee in a cup, and they test it with a um, I don't know, it's like a metal pen stick or something, and they test it the clarity of the pee, and to see if it's it's hydrated or not. As long as it's hydrated. You have to go way in after that and then hit your um hit your 170 or under mark. As long as you do them two things and pass, then you pass that test for the for that day. Okay. Wow. Um and and okay, so when you step on the scale though, you're 170 pounds, correct? Not 155. One step, not 155, 170, fully hydrated. You can't be like if I step on 170 and my P's neon green or neon orange like like it is when I'm 155 that then I fell. Okay. And as far as the organization goes, just you know, you've been in organizations before, but there's so much attention on them as they continue to grow and now signing a lot of fighters from America, the way it runs operationally and all that stuff. What was that like for you? Incredible. The the show itself is like nothing that you'll see here in America. Um it reminded me when I fought back in um, Dream. The they present the fighters like old school pride it, before the matches start. They present the fighters, and then they um they got the war drums in the beginning. The actual show itself is it's inc it's an incredible show to go to if you're a, if you're a hardcore mixed martial arts fan or even if you're not. The show itself is electric inside. It's a weird thing with with you know the fighters leaving the UFC. I, I feel like there are some people who, in a weird way, maybe I'm wrong. Like they almost like put an evil eye out there. Like they 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 root for you guys to fail outside of the UFC to justify the UFC's decision not to sign you. Do you feel do you feel those eyes on you? Do you feel like there are people that are happy that you failed in your first fight outside of the UFC to say, look, we we, we didn't sign him. It was the right thing to do. Yes, but there. I mean that there will always be people who are happy about my failure, but they're the same people who are happy about everyone else's failures. The, uh, what I learned over a stretch of uh, time in this sport, like with fans and things like that, of uh, nothing is personal toward me. I never look at anybody's bad feelings personal toward me. It's usually a, a lot about like, what's going on with them personally. So like if someone's wishing for my downfall or want something bad on me, it just says more about themselves than it does about me. I don't, I don't pay attention to any of that. Um, so I, I really just really try to focus on my fans and the encouragement I get from the people who are 
you know, saying good things. Did you feel like you got a love afterwards? Who's there? Huh? Who's there? Your son? Daughter? No, my daughter. Here, here. Here you go. What does she want? She needed her uh, puppy dog. <laughs> um, did you feel like you got a, lo a lot of love afterwards, especially with the injury? Yeah, I, 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 um, I always get a, a crazy amount of support, win, win or lose. Um, you there's always haters. You'll, they'll never go away. But uh, win or lose, my fans have been with me. Like, I never looked at this sport like one fight. This, this fight means everything. I never looked at it like that. I'm I'm in love with the sport of uh, mixed martial arts, and I've always have been. I've been a long-term thinker, not one fight, one championship, one anything. Everything I've done was over the course of many years. So I have a different way of viewing things than a normal fighter or a normal person who's been in the sport for a short period of time. Timofey is very good, not very well known here in America. Did he surprise you at all? Um, I knew, I knew we had to wrestle at some point. So, um, I think I waited too long to wrestle, but I knew going into the fight, we're going to have to wrestle to take away this guy's explosiveness, um, his speed and explosiveness for how big he was, was shocking. That was, um, usually when I, as a guy gets bigger, as they get more muscle bound, as they get everything. Um, you usually lose speed you, and you lose that, that pop. Um, he was incredibly fast, like a, like a, like a featherweight fast and very explosive. So I was shocked by that more than anything, but I knew going into the fight, we'd, we'd have to wrestle at some point and wear that out to be able to even up, even up the, uh, speed difference. So, um, if I was surprised by anything, it was the speed and explosiveness inside there. You you alluded to this earlier. You lost your UFC debut against Donald Cerrone. Did you did you take any positives from that experience and and try to remember them as you were dealing with this one? Were there any similarities between the two experiences? It it, it sort of came to mind when we were digesting all of this. Like yeah, you know he he lost his UFC debut, but ended up becoming UFC champion. Did you draw any similarities between the two experiences? Yeah, it was just so long ago. I had a different thought. I had a different mind then. Like I, after the Cerrone fight, I probably sat and dwelled on that for so damn long that I lost precious training hours um, trying to understand why and, and if I did this and if I did that. And I've done that for fights in the past. And I've that's been my biggest regret is just kind of dwelling too much on losses, dwelling too much on failure versus just kind of understanding it's, it's part of my process. Um, just got to get my feet wet and just continue focusing on continuing to grow each day. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm more proud of myself that I've lost and I didn't let it affect me the way I let losses affect me in the past. So the, if I, if I grew any way, if I showed growth in any way, it was that, that um, I didn't allow the loss to kind of take control of me. I just, it happened. I, was I pissed off? Yeah. Um, I never like to lose. I'm competitive. But uh, I got right back in the gym and continued to get better. Uh, have you been punched in that eye yet? Yeah, yeah. We've been sparring quite a bit. And no, um, no, no reservations? Doesn't feel weird? No, no. Okay, great. <laughs> the, the the fight that i think everyone at some point i thought maybe they would do it in this next one they went with edward but i, I i'm wondering if um shin Aoki is is on the radar are we going to see that fight again i'm sure he is i'm sure he is i mean that's a trilogy he got me one i got him one um for me i just i badly want to beat uh fully and he's held the belt He's been he's been the champion over at one, and he's a hell of a fighter. So I barely just want to be the former champ. Um, I need that. I need that under my under under my belt, and then I can go ahead and um, I, I see that being a natural progression. Fully Ang to Aoki to somewhat of a somewhere near a title shot from there. Is it possible that you slide back into the tournament if someone falls out? 
Is that on the table? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's possible. Um, I'll be ready to fight. So whatever, whatever happens, happens. I'd love that. That'd be nice. It certainly will. Yes. Or would be nice. I should say. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. I, I, I don't know. Do you, do you find do you have some kind of connection with like DJ and Sage since the three of you went in there? Do you, I know you're not connected as far as training or even where you live, but it does feel like we've kind of grouped you three together. Um, and, you know, even DJ's fight that night was very tough. It didn't go Sage's way. He had the surgery. Do, do you feel any kind of kinship with them, or am I making something out of nothing here? No, I, I talk to DJ still. We, we text back and forth. Um, I Look, I look at us as uh, sort of pioneers for the sport, not uh, DJ's done it all, seen it all. You know, he, he to me, is probably the, the best guy to do it nobody's done what he's done or even came close. Um, but at some point fighters are going to have to stick up for themselves. They're going to have to find out what they're worth. And there's only one way to do that. You know, you gotta have the carriage to kind of fight out of your contract and see what else is out there. So DJ was brave enough to do that. I was brave enough to do that. And so is Sage, Re regardless of criticism, regardless of what the, the masses are going to say. Um, Sometimes you have to do that in order for anything to grow. And I think it helped the sport grow. I think yeah. people are understanding. Um, one guy does it, two guys do it. And uh, next thing you know, um, people understand that there's a, there's a whole other larger market out there. We're worth, we're worth a lot more and we're selling ourselves short. Eddie, I appreciate it. Very well said. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, happy to hear that you'll be returning in August. I believe that's one championship 100, Dawn of Heroes. And I'm happy to hear that your your eye is doing okay as well. And, and better luck next time with the uh, the trivia. You you gave him you gave him your best shot, but I, I'm, yeah. I'm I, I got big plans for you. Okay, so I, I'm hoping that you'll come back. You'll go back to the drawing board, and we'll see you next year. All right. That was an old college try. You seated me badly. You put me in a third seat. Oh, I didn't on. like the way he seated me there. I would have loved to have been next to Stephen Thompson too. <laughs> that was a that was a dream that was a dream seat you gave Stephen. Okay, I'm so. sorry. All right, next one. I owe you one. All right. Thank you, Eddie. We'll talk to you soon. All the best to you. There he is, the I'll underground king himself, returning in August. Great to see him in good spirits, and great to see the eye doing good as well. Hello everyone, it's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.